Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 9th of March with me, Patrick Munley. The global fight to safety looks set to continue, which should see core bond yields can, uh, remain under pressure, credit spread widen, and we've recently seen the dollar lose its uh, safe haven status. Um, working on the assumption that the equity markets remain under pressure for the remainder of March as traders monitor the growing spread of COVID-19 and reprice the global growth outlook. One of the key issues is how far the Fed will cut rates. The Fed won't want to be dragged into supporting the stock market on a frequent basis and will want fiscal stimulus to play its part. However, it will be hard for the Fed to under-deliver on a 50 basis points of easing now priced for the 18th of March meeting which should take the Fed's target range to 0.5 to 0.75%. That's not too far away from the Fed's lower bound and expectations of a fresh round of QE have started to weigh on the dollar. In theory, it's a blackout week for the Fed ahead of the March 18th meeting. But it may be a case that uh, there are some hastily arranged congressional testimony for the Fed Chair Powell next week, offering the Fed support. As we've seen, the reaction to the non-farm payrolls data, uh, markets are looking forward at equity markets and not backwards at activity or price data. So the NFIB, CPI and further democratic primaries over the weekend are unlikely to play a key role in foreign exchange market pricing this week. Uh, we can expect the White House to be ready to offer assistance to the markets, perhaps by reallocating some emergency FEMA funds, should Congress permit that. From a technical perspective, uh, the dollar has made a decisive and impulsive move lower from the uh, double top discussed in prior analysis sessions. Um, now what I'm looking for is, uh, is price to, to find a, a reaction low, an initial reaction low, and then to see um, some type of corrective price action. I've, uh, I've overlaid a, a downsloping channel here now that, uh, that I'm going to be tracking. I'll be looking for any bounces back into this 97 area to be the first area where I'd look to, uh, to re-engage short positions. If we get through the 97, the, uh, the line in the sand really for the bearish thesis at this stage will be up to, uh, to 98.20, 98.50. As long as this area holds, then I think we will see another leg lower ultimately in the dollar. If we hold the 97 on the initial test as resistance, then I'm looking for a move down to test the pivot cluster and the projected descending lower parallel here um, down to 94.50 as, uh, as the next target on the downside. Whilst we're talking about uh, the dollar, let's check in with gold. Gold has continued to track the price template as per last year's price action. I'm now looking for some consolidation here, but ultimately we should see a pop higher to test the 1735 area um, as resistance. And I'd be looking for bearish reversal patterns to, uh, to emerge here to, to initiate some short positions in gold. Looking for a move back to, to retest 1630 as support. And then we will uh, we'll see where that leaves us. Um, in the Eurozone, the, obviously the Euro has had its single biggest weekly jump since 2016, largely as a result of surging volatility triggering short covering. And also now the view that the Fed might have to uh, contemplate renewed uh, quantitative easing. The week ahead will see focus on the ECB's response. It looks like the ECB didn't want to play ball with the coordinated rate cut, genuinely believing lower rates would do more harm than good. This puts it in a tricky spot for next week's ECB meeting. Uh, market watchers uh, think that it wants to avoid a rate cut and instead will be looking at uh, more targeted measures to support corporate and small enterprise lending. Uh, maybe a Teltro targeting the corporate sector. The lack of a, a bazooka from the ECB may add to pessimism in risk assets and pressure on the Fed to do the heavy lifting with their easing. And this should really keep a bid under the euro. Um, the, 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 the data will have uh, will, will probably not have as much bearing on the, the FX market next week. Instead, I think the traders will uh, be focusing on the politicians. Do they passively allow fiscal stimulus by suspending budget rules in a slowdown or actively pursue spending to fill a hole in domestic demand? 
From a technical perspective, like I say, we've seen this uh, impulsive move higher now in the euro. I'm looking for um, for a move up towards this 14, uh, 14, 20, 14, 50 area to cap this initial advance. And then I'll be looking for a relatively shallow correction back into the 1150, 112 area. This, uh, this is the prior descending trend line. As this acts as support, then I'll be looking to, uh, to re-engage the market on the long sides, ultimately targeting a move up to uh, 150, 50 as the next upside objective uh, for the euro. Really at this stage, um, as long as, uh, as long as, it, even if we got a, a deeper pull back to 110, um, as long as this area holds, then uh, again I'd be comfortable uh, stepping back in on on the long side of the euro dollar. But certainly this move looks impulsive, and we should see a corrective, um, some corrective price action play out. But uh, that will offer an opportunity to uh, to get back in on the long side in the euro dollar. Cable trading uh, back above 130. Really thanks to a combination of the weak US dollar and a basic speculation around a Fed style emergency cut by the Bank of England. Markets now seem quite comfortable with the idea that Andrew Bailey will deliver a 25 basis point cut at his first meeting as uh, BOE governor on the 26th of March. Uh, next week, the real challenge for the pound will be the release of the UK budget. After the cabinet reshuffle in mid-February, markets had put sizable hopes that the new Chancellor Rishi Sunak would have carried forward more aggressive fiscal stimulus. The spread of COVID-19, albeit still relatively limited in the UK, has triggered a fiscal response worldwide and the UK government will likely follow with some targeted measures to curb the impact of the virus on firms. The fiscal stimulus side may therefore be partly outshadowed uh, by the, the by the budget release, providing sustained support for the pound. The other key driver um, that we must be cognizant of uh, for the longer term is the, uh, the perspective uh, for the UK EU trade negotiations, which uh, which will probably weigh on the pound um, in the coming months. From a technical perspective, as I highlighted in uh, in one of my charts of the days last week, um, the sterling held the. Uh, 127 support area. I'm now looking for a move up to test 132 to 130, uh, 132 to 132.80 area, this uh, projected descending trend line resistance. And once again, I think once we trade up into this area, we will see uh, we'll see sellers emerge again. And I'm ultimately looking for another leg of downsides um, to test into this 126. Uh, 126.50 area. From there, I see the potential for uh, for a more sustained uh, recovery in sterling. But for now, I'd be uh, I'm really looking for bearish reversal patterns in around this 132, 132.50, and I'd be targeting a, a, certainly a retest of the 127.30 lows that we saw this week, and uh, ideally down to this uh, corrective target at the 126.60. Japanese yen has, uh, has re-emerged as a standout safe haven currency, largely as the proactive Fed has undermined the dollar. Not until the market sees the number of new COVID-19 cases plateauing or some really aggressive fiscal stimulus, can we expect equity markets to, to find the floor at this stage. So with risk assets staying under pressure for, for probably for most of March now, uh, the US, uh, the for the uh, dollar yen strong support should be seen um, as we test into the, the potential triple bottom here. Uh, traditionally, the, the Japanese uh, Ministry of Finance would have instructed the uh, Bank, of Japan, Bank of Japan to intervene um, in the FX markets with, uh, with the scale of the move we've seen. But with the White House, uh, with, with the White House um, monitoring um, all economies for um, Currency manipulation, we're probably not going to see an outright move by the BOG. Uh, instead, what's probably more likely is that the semi official, the GPIF, um, may see value in um, un unhedged US Treasury purchases under the 105 level, which would achieve the same end as, as FX intervention. And the BOJ is currently buying more assets, they're buying JGBs and stock ETFs as part of its existing QQE. Um, scheme. So it, do, it doesn't look like they'll be looking to cut rates given that the local banking system um, is, is under pressure. Um, so I, I think that um, 
in this coming week, any bounce we see from this, uh, this potential triple bottom here, um, as highlighted in the chart. So I'm looking at this support area of 104.50. I think we could see a bounce here. I want to see a big keto reversal pattern set up, but ultimately I think um, moves back into this 107.50, uh, 108 level um, will offer another selling opportunity. And I think once we uh, once we come back down to retest this uh, this this 104 area, 104.50 for a, for a fourth time, I think it will give way then. And we should see a move down, probably uh, looking to the psychological 100 level. So um, looking for a bullish reaction on the initial test here of uh, below 105. But ultimately, once we see a correction, corrective pattern play out this week, I think there's a selling opportunity uh, in the dollar yen. Um, so keeping an eye on that one. Um, in Australia, 25 basis point rate cut by the RBA really failed to um, to dampen uh, the Australia the Australian dollar, given the markets even more dovish expectations. Um, the bounce that we saw in equities didn't really translate into a material recovery in the Aussie, um, and we're uh, it's it's vulnerable really to um, to more risk aversion. Um, and this really probably is going to be uh, continue to be the key narrative for the week. Um, you know, shallow rebounds in equities and able to lift the Aussie, which remains highly vulnerable to the downside. There's no data releases on the calendar in Australia that's likely to have any material impact on uh, on the Australian dollar or the RBA rate expectations in the coming weeks. So it's going to really take its lead from um, from risk sentiment. What I'm looking for really at this stage, we've. We've managed to chew through the resistance here, the descending trend line. I'm now looking for a test of these prior lows up to um, up to this 67 handle. I think we certainly will see some profit taking there and um, and maybe some fresh sellers into the market. And we'll see then when the um, uh, momentum studies roll over, can we make a, 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 a secondary low, a secondary reaction low here at higher levels in the Australian dollar? So I mean, if we can hold the 65, 65.50 area. Um, then there's an opportunity, I think, for uh, for another leg of upside. Um, maybe we take out this uh, 67.50 resistance and uh, and take a look at 68. But if we don't find this secondary low, so we don't get the bullish reversal patterns after the correction, um, then I think we uh, the Aussie is probably in trouble, and we're, we're going to take a look at a new low for uh, for the year to date. We've got this pivot cluster down here at uh, 63.50, and I think if we do trade down to there. Uh, watching for bullish reverse patterns, I think we'll try and, uh, another basing attempt. But uh, immediately this week, I'll be looking at bearish reverse patterns at this 67 handle as, uh, as a shorting opportunity. Uh, the Canadian dollar was um, was really the only G10 currency unable to outperform the dollar this week due to the combination of uh, the Bank of Canada the 50 basis point cut, the lack of rebound in oil prices after OPEC plus cuts and the, and the mixed labour data. Um, it looks like there's, there's probably still some room for uh, some, some appreciation here. Market sentiment remains supportive. Um, and this doesn't bode ill for the Canadian dollar due to the currency's high beta, but also it prompts markets to keep looking for Fed easing and therefore uh, BOC easing on the lack of perceived coordination between the two central banks. Next week's calendar in Canada is mostly about housing data and should offer little inspiration when it comes to market impacts. Inevitably, the Canadian dollar will uh, will remain driven by the um, by the, the ex expectations uh, with, with respect to um, oil and the, the Bank of Canada. Um, from a technical perspective, the uh, we tested the resistance that I highlighted in a, um, a chart of the week up here at the 134.50. We've consolidated, but we haven't really rolled over and, and corrected as such. Um, if we do see a pullback, then I'm looking at this uh, this 133 area, uh, the ascending trend line, probably to act as support at this stage on a third test. And uh, then I think we're probably going to test new highs, um, probably looking at this 136 area. We've got this prior high 136.70. So I think we'd probably look at taking out the stops above there and then maybe we'll see a more sustained reversal or, or, or a sustained correction 
um, in the Canadian dollar. But if we do uh, if we do pull back here and we take out this um, this trend line support, then I'd be looking at uh, a move down to to test the yearly pivot from above at uh, at one thirty two. But at the moment, I think uh, we should be looking for this ascending trend line to support here at the one thirty three. 30 area and then we should see a, a new high. Okay, that, uh, that wraps up the weekly market outlook for the week commencing the 9th of March.